One of the first things I like to do is record on video what this looks like. There, that's a little better. And if you are working on a clock like this also, it, this video might be helpful. It's not just for me. It's for helping other amateur clock enthusiasts. I notice the gears on all these wheels are in the upper part. Below, you don't see any. So when, you, when I put this back together, knowing that the gears are oriented in this direction, that helps. The first thing I want to do is let down the power in the spring because the spring is wound up and there's a problem with this movement and I can already see that there is a huge amount of dirt in here and usually that's oil that's gone thick and over the years when something doesn't work people keep squirting it and eventually it just becomes a thick sludge. So. I have my letdown tool. Now in my previous video I mentioned that the the winding arbor here was a four, a number four. That's that's what fit on my master key. It was a number four. But in this I used a four and I couldn't get it on. This uses a five, a number five. So the key that I chose an Ingram number five in the last video that was I believe the correct key so anyhow I put this on here like this I don't know if you can see that all right when I turn this it it wants to wind see that so I'm taking the pressure off of it I'm gonna hold this with my hand on the side keep the movement from spinning. I'm going to turn this a little bit and I'm going to stick my tweezers in here to push the click. See that? I'm pushing it. So now it can release and all that power I'm just letting it spin in my hand very slow and controlled and that spring is expanding. Okay, that's what we want. That is actually a st pretty strong spring. Okay, there we go. And I'll just keep, uh, even though that won't go anymore on its own, I'll just, uh, there we go. That's the end. Okay. So now, the power is released. You don't have to worry about the gears flying around. And then, now you know why these posts are necessary on the uh, movement plate they keep the spring expanding down in a controlled manner instead of up into the movement. Everyone in clock repair starts somewhere. This is where I'm starting. Some people have tons and loads of experience. Don't be too hard on your harsh in your judgments on people that are learning. Some of these clocks when they're saved by an amateur is the last step before somebody puts them in the landfill. Just seeing what's moving here and what's not. Okay, that's not and that's not. Okay. That's coming right off. So now what we have left on this front plate is the escape wheel, which lifts out. And the verge. Hmm. There's an interesting wire that uh, holds the pivot that the verge rides on. And you can see how it releases if you pull it and this is just held on by it goes through this hole and in the back it's bent over so we'll just take this off here see that just comes off
And then this piece. Okay, there we go. Put that in the cleaner basket. Well, now the last wheel I took off was the escape wheel here. So I'll take off the next one. Pretty dirty on the pivots. We'll just stick that in the basket for cleaning. I'll put that one in. And then the next biggest is this one. I won't, well, I'll inspect these later. And then you have this one. Wow, pretty dirty. And then over here we have the motion works. It's the hour pipe that the hands ride on. It has a lot of oil on there. So that just comes right off. And if I understand correctly, you're not supposed to oil the, the hour pipe. But there's a lot of stuff on there. And then this piece with the tension washer here. That's the tension washer with the, uh, I think that's a cannon pinion with a lot of grease or something on there. So that's going in. And then this other little one, it doesn't look too bad. So I haven't, I didn't see any broken teeth right away, so I'm real happy with that. That makes me feel a lot better. And then this should just lift off of the post. All right, well, it came out, and then it goes like this. So this is called loop end, a loop end spring, because it has a loop right here. Some just have a hole which would be a whole end spring. Wow, and you can see how filthy that is. That's pretty dirty. Okay. Black sludgy stuff. And then you can see how the, the very inner coil there's a little notch on this arbor that interacts with the hole on this uh, spring that catches and that's what winds it. So to dislodge this wheel from the spring sometimes you just have to turn it the opposite direction that you wind it and it releases. Sometimes it's not so easy Okay, there it is. That was not the most graceful thing to do. So now everything gets a bath. If this is uh, over technical for some, I apologize. If it's not technical enough, <laughs> I apologize for that as well. Okay. Okay, that's gonna go in my heated ultrasonic basket okay I changed my mind after all I am gonna use a little wire basket to put the nuts in because they fell right through the bottom which was pretty stupid of me of course they'd go through the bottom they're small but I wasn't sure I could find it <laughs> I'm still working on my organization alright so that'll go in Okay, into the cleaner. Alright, need a little more water in there. Okay, everything's covered.
All right, after three times in the cleaner, I take each part out. If it's clean, I mean, I'll go over it with a cordless toothbrush. And if I think it's clean enough, I'll put it in my water rinse, rinse it with water. And then I put it in denatured alcohol to displace all the water. And then I put it in the heater. I'll show you that in a second. This is the the uh, great wheel that the spring was on. Horrible. It was so dirty. And there's still a little dirt on there. So I'm just going over it with the toothbrush. Uh, I hope you can see that. I can't even see the viewfinder there. But that's what I'm doing. And you can keep rinsing and cleaning until it's good. The steel parts I go over with a Scotch-Brite dipped in the liquid. Sometimes on the steel there's a lot of roughness. I don't worry about the pivots, I'll get that later. Just go over all the parts, like the lantern pinion there. Okay, swish it after that. Okay, after I clean it, I take it. I swish it in the water. After the parts are dry, they are usually inspected for wear, and the end of the pivots, if they have lines or scoring in the... Alright, here's all the little parts, and we're going to try to put them back together. Well, I didn't film putting the bushing in because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, now that it's in, it's a little proud. It comes above the surface a little bit. So I'm filing it so that it doesn't come above the surface of the plate. Because I heard that's a good thing to do. And then once it's level, I'll, uh, I'll put the little oil sink in. The bushing I put in is just slightly smaller than the pivot, so I'm just using this this cutting uh, until the pivot. Okay, okay, now it's going in. So now I'm going to use a smoothing brooch to clean up that hole. Anyhow, I just find the right size and then I just smooth up that hole. This had three bushings that somebody put in before and two of them needed replacing and one of them the uh, let me just point to it here that's where the bushing needed to go and it was for me, it was difficult to get it in there, but in it is. So now I'll try to clean up, put this back together, and see where we are at that point. In case anyone noticed, I had the spring upside down and backwards when I put it in before, so this time we're going to put it in correctly. <laughs> oh.
The ideal way would be to uh, wind the spring up so it's small and put a retaining clip on it. But there are other ways to do things. Let's do it that way. That way makes sense. a little better. I think that's correct. Just a little pressure and it sounds sounds good. We still need this bit and this goes and it goes on from the front. Yeah, and then that goes over the end of that once you get the verge on and the verge goes let's say it goes all the way down okay then this is supposed to go over that little piece there Okay, it's running without any oil. Now it's stopping, but it, and it's only has a couple of winds on the spring. So if it's doing that without oil, I think with oil, it should do pretty good. I put the smallest amount of oil till I saw it was pulled into the sink, the oil sink. Let's see. Each of the pivot ends, the winding arbor. No, no oil goes in the hour pipe. I put a drop of oil on the faces of the pallet, pallet faces there. And then on the reverse side, the corresponding pivot holes and winding arbor. Oh, and the part that goes uh, back and forth that the um, the verge rests on, I'll, I'll just put a drop there. Another place, I put a drop, uh, I don't know if you can see that, where the click spring interfaces with the click. I'll just put a little drop of oil in there. That contact point there. I did not show putting the movement back in the case. It's just a matter of four screws going in. 
while it looks like it's level in relation to the case. Normally you'd let the clock run for at least a week to see how it see how it does. But I'm gonna let it run in the case because I need to I I I need the room in my shop and I can't afford the luxury of having it sit here for another week. I'm just gonna put uh, the dial and hands back on and then I'll put it up on the wall where I have it in the house and I'll monitor it from there. The part about the dial is, uh, I mean the uh, hands, you don't want the hands contacting the dial and sometimes they just need to be bent a little bit. So I'll put this on and see how Okay, that doesn't look bad. It's got room underneath. Okay, that's touching a little bit, so it just needs to come up a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And then as it goes around, I'll just check that and make sure it's not touching. And make sure it's not touching the glass, which it's not. That is nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. Alright. Whew! It's a little scary when you don't know what you're doing. Generally, when uh, a clock is being test run to make sure the movement's running properly, if you do it in the case, you leave the dial off, and that way you can make adjustments to the crutch one way or the other. But the clock, when it's on the wall, <clears throat> when you hang it on the wall, you want to use a little level and just put it in here open the little door and put it in and when the clock is level then the hole in the case you put that screw through that hole into the wall and that secures it so now the clock is always level so if someone bumps it it stays level otherwise you'll be you'll be moving it around every time somebody bumps against it because that'll put the clock out of beat anyhow I'd like to thank everyone for joining me on this journey of trying to restore a very sad clock, the 1934 Ingram Bedford Time wall clock. And definitely a learning experience. And I learned from comments that you all have left, whether positive or slightly negative. <laughs> uh, there's always things to consider. And I'll say that as an amateur, I don't always know what the best way to proceed is. And sometimes there's not anywhere to go for the help or assistance. So I just, I just do the best that I can. All right, let's just wrap this video up. Thanks again, and I hope everyone has a great day. Okay, bye for now.